Hello, this is Alex Young from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center for the Sun today. April 16th, the Sun produced a really beautiful eruption. This was filament material, which created a, what we call a erupting prominence on the east limb or left side of the Sun. This came from the same area that produced a nice eruption the day before. At the time, it was unnumbered, but now NOAA has given it the designation Active Region 11461. This was very, very beautiful, and when it reached its peak in the SDO field of view, it was at least 175,000 kilometers high. Showing you here several different wavelengths from the SDO AIA camera in extreme ultraviolet, it shows different temperatures of material. This filament eruption blasted away from the sun and it also produced what we call a coronal mass ejection or CME and this had an x-ray solar flare associated with it an M1.7 that this is really really amazing because you can see the material flying away but then material starts to get sucked back down onto the surface this is plasma and it's magnetized and so it responds to the sun's magnetic field around these areas of high concentrated magnetic field active regions or sunspot groups the material is sucked into back down a path it's not just a standard trajectory ballistic trajectory but following the actual magnetic fields of the sun we can look at this with the Soho Lasco 2 coronagraph and you start to see the inner disk uh, with AIA 304 you can see the material blasting away in the CME but you can also see this material getting sucked back down. We were also fortunate to see this eruption with the stereo spacecraft, the stereo behind. We don't have the high quality data but here the low quality salt, what we call the space weather data you can see the dark material erupting away. NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center Space Weather Center also produced a computer model to show the trajectory of the CME as it travels through the solar system. And in this case, we can see that it's not traveling in the Earth direction, uh, but what we can see is that it's going to probably pass the Spitzer Space Telescope, the stereo behind spacecraft, and the Mars Science Laboratory. It will probably reach Spitzer on April 18th at around 15:20 UT or so, and Stereo B and the Mars Science Laboratory on the next day at 5 and 13 UT approximately. And this has an error of plus or minus about seven hours. So we hope you enjoyed this really amazing event. And we will see you next time at The Sun Today.